Hey guys, well here I am melting down some wheel weights. Nothing new about that, but we always worry about zinc being involved here. So I was thinking I have a PID that I use for my uh, casting pot and I also use it for my press for the uh, wax temperature. And it does have an alarm feature on there. So I was thinking why not use that alarm feature to help me with the uh, casting of the wheel weights. So if you look here, I got the probe sitting right there. This is in a loose tube, so as it melts down, that tube will drop. It'll drop within probably a half inch of the bottom of the plate there. Uh, that just comes up and over. I wanted to loop it high because I, I didn't want the uh, wires inside to heat up. So I got the PID set at 665, I do believe, and that's right over here and I'll monitor the temperature and when that alarm goes off that'll tell me it's time to look at this thing I can skim it down and uh, get all the uh, get all the junk out of it and I don't have to worry about the uh, zinc uh, melting into it so I'll let this cook a little bit and then I'll bring back to you uh, in a little bit okay okay you can see we're getting close here <clears throat> the alarm will go off at 665 now I just stir the uh, wheel weights in again it'll bring the temperature back down so we're, we're getting down there the other thing I did here is I put aluminum plates under the feet and I put bolts underneath to keep it off the surface the last time I uh, did this it actually burned the board underneath the uh, concrete board I have here this is a piece of that party plank that you can get at the Home Depot or Lowe's. And uh, I tried this with the torch on the corner of it, and it didn't face it at all, so I figured it was a good work surface. The other thing I did under the pan, muffin pan here, I got a chunk of aluminum that I can put down here. Underneath that, I just have a couple pieces of angle iron, so this way I don't have direct contact with the surface of the table when I pour my lead in. So once we get this uh, melted down, uh, the alarm will tell me it's time and I'll check that out. For some reason, uh, if I don't hold this close, it makes it flash. And I guess it's an optical illusion with the camera. So that's what's going on right now and I'll get back when the lead is ready. Okay, we're ready to get rid of some of these metal clips right now. We're holding around 692, still a safe temperature for the zinc. The other thing I did a while back because I used to scoop, uh, I used to scoop the clips out with, with a slotted spoon like that. And it worked okay, but still a little bit of a nuisance. This was an old uh, nail magnet on a stick that I had years ago. I got another one. So I used this. I made an aluminum can like this with a handle on it. Now I just put the magnet in there. That grabs all the clips. I bring that right over to my bucket here. Lift it up. Makes it a lot easier. Actually, I thought that was a pretty good idea. So, I'll get this cleaned up. And I'll add some more wheel weights in here and get a full pot. And I'll be listening for the uh, buzzer to go off. It makes it a lot easier. I don't have to babysit this thing all the time. So once that goes off, I know I'm in the ballpark, then I can pay attention to it again. But... Right now, it looks like we don't have any zinc floating in there, so it all worked out. Okay, just in the shop here, getting a few more of these wheel weights ready. And uh, I can see across the yard here. I'm only a few feet away, but I'm out of the direct sunlight. Uh, that alarm's just about ready to go off. And uh, I'm going to clean this thing up. That's it. See, do you really need this thing? No. 
do you have to babysit when you have it? No. That's the nice thing. I could be a few feet away and uh, still monitor things, but uh, I don't have to watch it. So that's my uh, segment on this. Like I said, it's something I thought of, and uh, you know, maybe it's useful for somebody else. So anyway, guys, uh, give me some feedback on it. All right, take care. Okay, here are the components for this alarm build here. Here we have our batteries right here. Here's the buzzer. This is rated for four to eight volts. So this is six volts right here with uh, four AAAs. I have a small connector here so I can take the battery pack out if I need to replace the batteries. Over here, I put a switch so when the alarm goes off, I wanna turn it off. I can do that that'll go into the lid of the PID unit and that's about it so when these two wires hit there goes the alarm so the next thing we have to do is put this into the box with all the components for the PID unit here we have the back of the PID unit that I have uh, mine I got from Auber yeah, mine's the 512A2, and this is for mine, so each one's going to be a little bit different. But if you look on the back of these, they have what they call the J1 output right there. Those are the two screws we're going to be hooking the buzzer into. They have no power at all. They're just a relay that makes a contact. So that's how mine's set up. In both diagrams, you'll see that they're still the same thing. If you read on the other sheet over here, and I'll bring it in front here, and we have this right here. J1 relay is a dry pull switch. Does, it doesn't provide any power. So it's just a contact on and off. So that's where we're gonna hook uh, our leads to and that'll make the uh, alarm work for our desired temperatures. So we'll get that going in a second here. Okay, here comes the front part. It is doing this on camera. So what I have to do for that J1 connect, it is the two bottom screws right here. Without taking this thing all the way apart, it's hard to get down to these things. So I think I can do this. So let's try getting these wires underneath and get the screws loosened. So, these so, right up underneath like that. Slide that one down. All right. And now we have this one here. This one underneath this way. That's the side. Go underneath that screw, same as the other. Uh, let's make sure that's loose. That gives us the J1 connection right there. Now I have to put back a few other wires that I had to disconnect. Here, so these, that way, here, this one hooks onto this terminal right here. I think I need a little more looseness there. Try that. These would be the uh, power coming from the AC that would uh, power the PID unit. So it shouldn't really matter which way they're hooked. Their AC, and it doesn't matter which one of these get connected for the uh, for the buzzer. There's, there, like I said, that's just a connection. That's nothing more than that. So we can hook, bring this in just a, just a hair here, and okay, there's that connection. Get that back on. Okay, we're gonna get down. All right, now what we can do here, we can connect the buzzer. This I already put double stick tape to it. I have a hole in the middle of it. Uh, this is really sticky double sided tape, so I got it stuck to the buzzer. I'm going to peel that off like that, and what I did is I found a correct size drill bit that will just fit in, fit in that hole, so I can feed it through here and locate where the buzzer goes. So I just have a through hole through the case, so the sound will go go through. That locates the hole right in the middle, right there, and we'll just give that a good press on, and that, like I said, that's good, good sticky stuff right there. All right, now we can push this unit back in so it snaps into place. Okay, there's that. This 
has to be reconnected on the top here. So this here is put back to this is the solid state relay right here. Okay. Here. And this one right here. So it's a bit of a nuisance doing this on camera. I was doing this for myself, it would be easier to see and handle. Now that's tight there. Okay. It lays back onto there. And now we have our switch. This will come in here. And this will come to here. We got that drilled out. Now that. Let me just take a little to be easier. Okay. okay. There's that. There's nothing. And there's the plates. That. Okay. And this gives me the ability to shut it off. Once this alarm goes off, I know I already reached the temperature I needed to. And uh, I can just turn this off and then I'll start cleaning up my uh, lead and pouring them into the ingot molds. So, let me get this to snug up. Like so. Here's the battery here. I'm gonna put a little piece of Velcro on that, stick that right down into there, and then all I have to do is plug my power in to there, and that'll be the whole unit that way. So I'll put the Velcro on it next, and then we'll get into the program sequence. Okay, now you can see I have the battery installed there that has the Velcro onto it. You can see the scent or the uh, alarm right there. That's hooked up to our switch. There's the little connection right there. So this is all good to go now. Now what we have to do is set the parameters to this. So let me put the camera back into the holder here. Okay. Shut the lid down. And for this particular unit, I have to get into the programming. So first thing I do is I press the set. I have to enter in 0001. So I go over, 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 and up. There's the one, then I hit set again. Now from here, what I'm looking for is AH1. That stands for alarm high, and this is the first alarm, because you can set two alarms for this. So we'll push the up, there's the high. Then we press set. All right, we're at 655. We're gonna bring this up to say 665. Okay, over, over, and we'll go up one okay then we press set again now what we're looking for is a l one alarm low number one so we go here a l one so there we are there and we had the other one set at 650 uh, 665 we're going to keep those numbers close and we're going to enter uh, this at 60 so we hit set again so we can just double check ourselves that's 60 uh, 665 on the high and then on the low we're 660 so that gives us a five degree difference so we hit set again we go down until we find end hit set and now we're set to go. That's the ambient temperature right now. This is set to go off at that number that we just set at that 665. I'm going to heat the uh, heat the uh, end of the uh, probe right now just to show you that it does work. And we'll get a little heat going here. And when it hits that 665, the alarm will go off. That'll tell me it's time to check this thing and everything that's not good should be floating. and it shuts off almost right away because it only had a five degree difference so when this thing goes off I'll turn this thing off and uh, and then I'll start skimming out everything that uh, is not good in the pot so that's that and I did get a chance to get the uh, get the rest of the unit made up and now you can see I got the stand made up with my burner on it the probe 
is just sitting right there. That's a piece of threaded tubing. That I got sitting about a half inch off the bottom. It's a little high right now. I just readjusted it, but I can adjust that down to about a half inch. This will go up and down, so I can put my lead in and just let that sit on top, and it'll just slowly push down as we get going. So that's about it for now. Now we gotta do is uh, get this thing going.